Thank you, everyone, for joining me today here at reInvent to learn about sustainability at AWS. My name is Abhishek Sharma. I'm a senior principal at AWS. I'm one of the founding members of Energy, Water, and Sustainability team. And I'm super excited to be here to talk to you about how we are building a more sustainable cloud for our customers. In this session, I would start with covering briefly about AWS's global infrastructure. I will also talk about ways by which we are working to reach our goal to be net zero carbon by 2040. Also meet our commitment to be water positive by 2030 and also our efforts on circular economy. Broadly, I'm from infrastructure, so I think about physical infrastructure that we build to provide AWS services to our customers. AWS global infrastructure spans over 102 availability zones across 32 regions, with five more regions planned and announced in Canada, Germany, Thailand, Malaysia, and New Zealand. With broad infrastructure and success and scale of that infrastructure comes broad responsibilities. We integrate sustainability in every aspect of how we build and operate this infrastructure that we provide to customers to use our AWS services to run their businesses. For us at Amazon, sustainability starts with our commitment with our Climate Pledge. In 2019, we co-founded the Climate Pledge along with Global Optimism to reach net zero carbon across our entire business by 2040. As the first signatory, we are committed to reaching that goal. And this goal, to remind you, is 10 years ahead of the Paris Climate Agreement. We at Amazon are working hard to reduce our carbon emission across our businesses, which includes Amazon Web Services, and which is what I'm going to cover in the rest of this talk. AWS has always focused on increasing efficiency across all aspects of our infrastructure. Right from design of our data centers, the hardware we use to power those data centers, and then tracking and monitoring performance across our operations to identify opportunities to drive efficiencies. We think efficiency allows us to deliver sustainable benefits and operational benefits to our customers. Due to our scale and focus on innovation, we're able to achieve efficiencies faster than a traditional enterprise data center could do on, on its own. Our global infrastructure is built on AWS's own hardware, which is custom and purpose-built, including servers, ser storage servers, routers, and silicon. By designing our own equipment, we're able to build hardware that reaches its optimal performance not by not being in unencumbered or encumbered by access features that, we, that are not used and consume energy. This allows us to get optimal performance from our equipment and capture power efficiencies in compute, storage, and more. One of the most visible ways we're driving efficiency is in designing custom chips. AWS Graviton is a general purpose processing processor uh, that customers can use to run everyday workloads from databases to websites. And EC2 instances powered by AWS Graviton allows our customers to do more with less specifically less energy. For example, one of our customers, Zendesk, is a software company, 
architected their workloads using AWS Graviton. And they were able to achieve over 50% reduction in monthly carbon emissions, achieved 30% higher performance, and also reduced costs. As we announced yesterday, Graviton 4 is the most powerful and energy efficient chip we've ever built. And it supports a broad range of workloads for our customers. Many of our customers are thinking about how to sustainably build and run AI ML applications on the AWS cloud. So in 2022, we launched AWS Trainium, a high performance machine learning chip designed to reduce the time and cost of training AI generated models. So this in turn means that building new models takes less time and less money. It's also potential cost savings up to 50% and energy reduction up to 29%. Yesterday, we also announced AWS Trainium 2. It's designed to deliver the highest performance and most energy efficient AI infrastructure for training infrastructure in the cloud. Inferentia is then our most power efficient machine learning inference chip. Our inferential machine learning chips is up to 50% more performance per watt and can reduce costs up to 40% against comparable EC2 instances. So through our scale, our custom hardware, focus on innovation, and focus on operational excellence across our infrastructure, we're able to achieve far greater efficiencies than it would be possible for a typical large or small enterprise to do on their own in their data centers. In fact, multiple studies conducted by 451 Research have shown that AWS's infrastructure is more energy efficient in fact, 3.6 times more energy efficient than surveyed median U.S. data centers, and up to five times more energy efficient than the average in Europe and Asia Pacific. In addition to driving efficiencies and innovation in custom hardware, we are also committed to power our operations using 100% renewable energy by 2025. When I started over nine years ago, we were early in our journey to power our operations globally with 100% renewable energy. Fast forward to today, we are the largest corporate buyer of renewable energy. And what it means is we buy renewable energy above and beyond the grid mix that already exists in the power grid where we consume power. We support development of new solar and wind projects through long-term agreements, usually not called power purchase agreements. We work with energy developers globally to support these projects, which are dedicated to power our operations. And these projects in several places are located in the same electricity or power grids where we consume electricity for our infrastructure. In 2022, Amazon reached renewable energy, 90% renewable energy across its infrastructure. That includes Amazon Web Services infrastructure. As of November 2023, Amazon has over 470 renewable energy projects across 26 countries with 26 gigawatts 
of capacity, clean energy production capacity. Once operational, these projects would produce renewable energy or clean energy to the grids that would be equivalent to avoiding carbon emissions of 29.3 million tons every year. To put it in context, this would be equal to taking 6.3 million cars off the road in the United States. Our renewable energy strategy is one of the most impactful ways we can mitigate climate change. When we started this journey, mechanisms and constructs did not exist that would allow us to support new solar and wind projects in areas, in countries, in regions where we had operations. It's still not possible today, but we are making progress, and we have created several mechanisms working with our energy suppliers that not only we can use, but could be used by other businesses as well to achieve similar goals. And one example I want to share with you today is our recent announcement in Indonesia, where we have an AWS region, with our utility PLN to enable 210 megawatts of solar projects that would be providing electricity, clean electricity, to power our operations in Indonesia. It's not all possible in every, every region and country to have projects directly providing power dedicated to us, but we're making progress. So what does it mean for our customers? In 2022, 19 of our AWS regions, the electricity consumed in those regions was attributable to 100% renewable energy. And we are working hard to make this across our, our, all our regions. One of the things that I get excited about working in infrastructure and working in sustainability and energy is what we are doing for the communities where we are supporting these clean energy projects. So in addition to producing clean energy, the projects we support also have economic benefit. We recently shared data that demonstrated that the renewable energy projects we have supported so far between 2014 to 2022 have had an economic benefit impact on communities about $12, million, $12 billion. In 2022 alone, these uh, projects supported more than 39,000 full-time equivalent jobs. We also have the opportunity to help inspire the next generation to learn about career opportunities that are emerging. And these jobs will be required to drive the clean energy transition. When a new project, a new solar or wind project construction starts, there are high-skilled jobs that are created, ranging from operating heavy machinery construction jobs to high-skilled jobs in, as electricians, welders. Once the construction is complete, there are ongoing operational requirements that create jobs for technicians with specialized skills to manage the operations for wind turbines and solar panels and then plant operators that are required to keep these projects functioning over their entire useful life. We're also partnering with some of our developers to provide tools to students to come and learn about renewable energy as well as get information about these new career paths. One of the places where we recently conducted a tour is in Amazon's first wind farm in Ireland. It's on, located on the west side of Ireland. And I'm going to share a video about that tour with you to show this project. As anyone who has 
has visited Ireland will know it is a very windy place and in this part of the world the wind is blowing all the time. This makes the country a very suitable location for wind parks. We're here at Amazon's Ardru Wind Farm and it's located in County Galway. We're hosting some local students and we're sharing what Amazon is doing with renewable energy and we're also introducing them to some of the careers in renewable energy and renewable energy technologies. We're harnessing the power of the winds in Ireland for the benefit of both our country and our company. Along with this wind farm here in Ardaru, there are two other projects that Amazon is supporting with that well. But Amazon has signed CPPAs or Corporate Power Purchase Agreements with wind farm and solar farm developers to help ensure that these projects can actually be built via unsubsidized uh, methods, which is a benefit to the local communities and Ireland as a whole. This wind farm and many other wind farms like it are where the students are going to be getting their energy from in the future. So we thought it would be really fun to have the local students come up with the name for the wind farm which we have called up to now the Ardaru Wind Farm. And the winning name was the Gustaguiha Wind Farm and that means a gust of wind in the Irish language. Customer obsession and community obsession is part of our day to day at Amazon and it's really really important to us to use our scale and also our ability to innovate really quickly to strengthen the communities around us. We're really proud to be a part of helping that transition to the renewable energy of the future and also for the next generation. To achieve our net zero goal by 2040, AWS must also address emissions beyond our electricity usage. This includes direct emissions that come from using fossil fuels for backup generators and a broad range of indirect emissions that we are ourselves not directly responsible for, but they come from our business operations, including our supply chain. So we rely on grid power to power our, our data centers. It's highly reliable. And there are certain moments in time where there are slight or blips or interruptions. To cover for those interruptions in order to provide our customers highly reliable, available infrastructure, we use backup generators. These backup generators generally use fossil fuel diesel. AWS is using cleaner fuels to power our backup generators rather than relying on fossil fuel diesel. AWS started transitioning to using hydro-treated vegetable oil, it's a renewable fuel, to power our backups. With our sites in Europe making that switch, with Ireland and Sweden be the first sites to make that switch. According to one of our suppliers, HVO can reduce greenhouse gas emissions over its, by 90% over its life cycle when compared to fossil fuel diesel. AWS scope three emissions, which is our indirect emissions, include the emissions resulting from building our data centers and manufacture of our hardware. For building data centers, the two most carbon intensive materials are steel and concrete. So instead of using steel from blast oxygen furnaces, which are traditionally used uh, to produce steel, these furnaces use coke or natural gas to make steel. Both are fossil fuels with carbon emissions. We are moving to steel from, produced from electric arc furnaces that incorporate scrap steel and can produce steel using renewable energy. Can also incorporate higher recycle steel content. Combination of this results in one-fifth embodied carbon 
from an EAF or electric arc furnace produced steel versus a blast oxygen furnace steel. Our design standards require the embodied carbon from concrete to be 20% re reduced in the US. We're rolling that out, we're expanding that requirement across all of our regions globally. For example, in Northern Virginia, AWS worked with a supplier to source eco-packed low-carbon concrete that has resulted in a reduction of 40% carbon emissions related to using concrete. Globally so far, we have completed construction of 43 data centers built using reduced, car reduced carbon steel and concrete. And in 2023 alone, we have saved 22,000 tons of carbon emissions from construction of 27 data centers. To put it in context, this is roughly carbon emissions emitted from 2.6, or more than 2.6 billion smartphones. To meet our uh, net zero commitments, we also have to address the emissions resulting from the manufacturing of our hardware. We need our thousands of suppliers to decarbonize for us to achieve that goal. So we're engaging with our top IT hardware suppliers on them reducing their carbon emissions so that we can support, they can support our carbon abatement goals. And we're doing so by helping them making investments to source clean energy for their operations. This year, Amazon joined the Semiconductor Climate Consortium. We believe industry collaborations are necessary to accelerate solutions for carbon reduction across the industry, not just among the members themselves, but across the in, across the in industry value chain. Another segment of emissions that we are addressing uh, is transporting hardware from manufacturing sites to our data centers. And we're doing it two ways. First, switching to modes of transport that have lower carbon emissions. Second, investing in low carbon fuels for those modes of transport and using battery electric vehicles wherever possible to deliver these, this equipment to our, and hardware to our sites. We're switching to low carbon emission fuels for both ocean and air transport. And starting with Dublin and Singapore, we are deploying battery electric vehicles to deliver server racks to our data centers. To achieve net zero carbon by 2040, we must also embrace uh, and make our operations more circular. By creating a circular economy for our hardware and equipment used in our data center, we can keep valuable resources operating longer. We in turn also reduce related carbon emissions in, in the supply chain and waste. AWS embraces the three, the three principles in circular economy to design our server racks, which is design, operate, and recover. Right from design, we are planning for repair, reuse, and recycle. For example, in new equipment design, AWS is prioritizing use of recyclable or bio-based content versus new material. The second is operate. AWS aims to keep rack equipment in operation as long as it's operationally efficient. Last year, AWS extended server lifetime from four to five years for production racks 
in five to six years for networking racks. And wherever we find an opportunity to operate our equipment longer, we do. Lastly, we recover value from securely decommissioned equipment through reuse, repair, and recycling. And AWS uses reverse logistic hubs for this process. To learn more about I'm going to share a short video so you can hear it from our team about the work they're doing. Right now we are in our failure analysis testing lab, which is a part of our AWS reverse logistics processes for North America. In the failure analysis lab, we evaluate, repair, and test components from retired server racks. All of the hardware that it takes to power our data centers is now able to come to our AWS reverse logistics hubs to be able to be repaired and reused. Our goal is to extend the life of our existing hardware whenever possible. When the hardware arrives, it's in AWS racks. We apply really the same high level of care and data security as we do when the hardware is active in production in our data centers. All of these server racks we receive are sanitized of customer data so they can be demanufactured. During this process, the servers are disassembled so that we can access the components we might be able to repair and reuse. And then we will test everything from switches, power supply units, dims, graphics processing units, and then optics. For our nitro parts, after they go through the demanufacturing process, they are eligible for our failure analysis testing process. When a part gets to the FA lab, the first thing we do is a visual inspection. We do have a repair process that allows us to repair some of the components on the card to allow us to further test the card. We put the repaired cards in testing rigs that simulate the environment of a data center, and then we have a series of software scripts that work in conjunction with the hardware to determine if the card will perform to the same high quality standards just as a new card from manufacturing. All of our testing process is supported by Amazon's Annapurna Labs teams to determine what needs changed, adjusted, or modified into the new card manufacturing. As a final step, the functioning cards are returned to inventory so they can be reused in one of our data centers. This process would not be possible without all of the people behind the scenes working together to solve these really interesting challenges that have not been solved on this scale before. The work that we do here is creating a more sustainable future for our data centers, and we're really proud to be a part of that. We have a lot of pride in the work that we do, and knowing that there's still a lot of useful life in the products that we touch to support all of the services that our AWS data centers support for customers. For AWS, running our operations sustainably also means reducing the use of water or the amount of water we use to cool our data centers. In 2022, last year, we shared with you we will be committed to be water positive by 2030. What this means is returning more water to communities than AWS uses in its direct operations. We're gonna meet this goal two ways. One, focused on innovation and driving efficiencies. And second, by partnering with communities. For example, we are developing water recycling systems and using AWS Cloud to track and monitor performance and find opportunities to optimize. AWS Global Water Use Efficiency of 0.1 liters per kilowatt hour demonstrates AWS leadership in water efficiency among cloud providers. There are also 20 data centers 
AWS data centers using recycled water for cooling. The second way we will meet our 2030 water positive commitment is to partner with nonprofits around the world and invest in projects that increase the availability of water to communities in, in areas where we operate. Once all of our water replenishment projects are operational, they will return nearly 3.9 billion liters of water annually to the communities and the environment. Water replenishment projects help expand water access, availability, and quality to water-stressed communities around the world. An example of this type of project I want to share with you today is in Spain. Spain is one of the most water-stressed, industrialized country in the world. It's here where every 100 liters of water a community has, on average, only 70, can be, 70 liters can be used. So AWS worked with Phytotech, a cloud-based water leak detection company that uses AWS services to identify and reduce leakages in the water system in a community in the province of Zaragoza. In total, 21 leaks and other types of water loss were identified, and by fixing a high priority list or set of these water loss, the project is reducing water loss by 33 million liters per year. So uh, in this session, we have taken a broad view look at how AWS is working to build a sustainable cloud in order to achieve its own sustainability goals. We've also talked about ways in which our, we're using our scale and culture of innovation to solve problems and challenges that have not been solved before. And in an attempt to not only meet our goals, but also pave the path for other businesses to achieve similar goals. Please uh, check the QR code to learn more about how we are building a sustainable business at AWS, and also check out all the other uh, reInvent sustainability sessions. Some of these you would be able to watch on demand. Also, uh, the last session on sustainability architecture is coming up shortly here in the Manila Bay at 3.30. And uh, lastly, thank you all for joining me today for, for this session. And uh, please take a moment to fill out a short survey in the mobile app so we can deliver the content uh, that you need in order to be successful. Thank you.